Hello sweeties. I have quite a few polishes from Night Owl Lacquer to share with you today. We have their July, August, and September Cream of the Month polishes, their Anniversary Polish, as well as their Potion Ingredients Volume 4 collection. Quick notes before we get started. After I swatch each polish, I'll show it under studio lighting and lower lighting, and then all except for the creams will also be shown with one coat over the black. Okay, so we're going to start with the three Cream of the Month shades. Lindsay never disappoints with her cream polishes. I use them as bases for almost all of my nail art, and more often than not, they're super opaque and really need more than two coats, which is exactly how these shades turned out. All three are shown with one coat, but you may need two if you have a longer free edge than me. First up is the July Cream of the Month, PNW Coast, described as a tail blue cream. Next is Serotinol, which is the August cream of the month, described as a wine red cream. And lastly, we have the September cream of the month, Mustard Seed, described as a brown-toned mustard cream. Next, we have the eight-year anniversary shade called Moonstruck, described as a violet-tinted linear holographic filled with burgundy to green shifting microflakies and glowing shimmer that shifts between green, blue, and fuchsia. Shown here in two coats. You may need three if you have a longer free edge. It does dry with very subtle texture, so a top coat is needed for a full glossy finish. The green of the shift is the most prominent in the studio lighting, but the blue and fuchsia definitely show themselves in the lower lighting. And now onto the Potions Ingredients Volume 4 collection. First up is Tendrils of a Bat Flower, described as a deep black-based multichrome that shifts to blackened indigo, red, and burgundy. 
shown here in two coats. You may need three if you have a longer free edge. You can see a bit of the indigo and red shimmer in the studio lighting, but they really pop when under the lower lighting. Next, we have Leaves of a Nightshade, described as a deep black base multichrome that shifts from bronze to multiple shades of green. Shown here in two coats, you may need three if you have a longer free edge. The bronze of the shift is visible in the studio lighting, but all the different green shifts take over in the lower lighting. Here we have Dust of the Moon, described as a clear base filled with holographic dust and glowy shimmer that shifts between aqua, blue, and indigo. Shown here in three coats. It does dry with some texture, so a top coat is needed for a full glossy finish. The blue shift is the most visible in the studio lighting, but the aqua and indigo come out in the lower lighting, making that soft pastel base just a bit darker. Next is Pollen of a Corpse Flower, described as a clear base loaded with orange, gold, green shifting micro flaky shimmer, holographic dust, and charcoal metallic micro flakies. Shown here in two coats. You may need three if you have a longer free edge. It does dry with some texture, so a top coat is needed for a smooth, glossy finish. All the shifts are seen in this one no matter the lighting, but they do become much more pronounced in the lower lighting. Here we have Whale of a Wraith, described as a blackened blue jelly with blue, green, and gold iridescent micro glitters and aqua blue and violet multi-chrome flakes. 
shown here in two coats. You may need three if you have a longer free edge, dries with some texture, so a top coat is needed for a smooth glossy finish. This is another that's mostly the same no matter the lighting. However, in the lower lighting, the violet of the flakes seem to pop out just a bit more and the base is a bit darker as well. And last, we have Nucleus of Evil, described as an orange jelly with orange, green, and gold iridescent micro glitters and orange, copper, and gold multi-chrome flakes. Shown here in two coats. You may need three if you have a longer free edge. Dries with some texture, so a top coat is needed for a smooth, glossy finish. Again, it looks the same no matter the lighting, but the shifts of the flakes become a bit more noticeable in the lower lighting. My top pick is definitely Leaves of a Nightshade. It not only had a smooth formula, but I loved this color. The bronze and the green shifty shimmer combo worked perfectly in that deep olive green base and it was just so pretty. Next, I'm gonna go with Tendrils of a Bat Flower. You know I love me some dark polishes and this is just that and I really enjoy how it just looks like a basic black shimmer, but up close you can see all these hidden red and purple specks, which I think gives it that perfect spooky mysterious shade for Halloween. And last, I'm going to go with Dust of the Moon. It has a perfect ghostly vibe to it, and I really enjoyed the combo of the blue to purple shifts with the hollow. Which are your favorites? Let me know in the comments. All of these polishes release September 22nd at nightowllacquer.com. The full potion collection will be $70. Individually, they'll range between $12 and $13. The cream of the month shades are $8 each and the anniversary shade is $13. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.